Welcome everyone to this presentation where we will talk about VDPA block, Unified Hardware and Software Offload for Virtio block. I'm Stefano Garzarella, I'm a senior software engineer in the Red Hat Virtualization team. During this presentation, we will talk about VDPA block and we will start from goals and benefits. Then we'll take a look at the standard part followed by Virtio block request and two possible ways to accelerate that part. At that point, we'll take a, a quick look at VDPA, since there have already been several talks about it, and we will focus on the Bird.io block device accelerators. Finally, we'll look at Chromium, especially at the block layer features that are bypassed when we use accelerators. Then, we will propose a mechanism to automatically switch between the fast and slow path if we need QEM storage features or not. The main goal and also a benefit of VDPA block is to have an unified software stack. This is really useful for the user perspective, so we have the same software stack for virtual machines, containers and bare metal applications. But also for vendor perspectives, since the abstraction of VDPA allows us to reuse a lot of code regardless of the hardware vendor and also to provide a possible accelerators in software. The QEMU auto switch feature will allow us to take advantage of QEMU storage features such as image file formats and block jobs. We will focus on high performance implementation suitable for modern fast NVMe drives. So if you are developing new accelerator devices, join us and take advantage of VDPA block software stack. You can find more information and useful links about VDPA at vdpa-dev.gitlab.io. Before talking about accelerators, let's see what is the standard path that a Bird.io block request follows. Starting from the guest kernel, to the host kernel, the request must go through different layers, it must be translated into different formats and is queued in multiple queues. So the request starts from the Linux block layer into the guest, then is queued in the BERT queue by the BERT.io block driver. <clears throat> in QEMU, the device emulator receives the request and queues it in the QEMU block layer, where at the end is handled by the asynchronous IO engine that can be Linux AIO or IO UA. At this point, QEMU needs to do a system call to send a batch of requests to the host kernel, where Linux AIO or IO UA handle them and forward to the virtual file system and the Linux block layer before hatching the device driver. A possibility to reduce the path that the request has to follow is to move the device emulation from QEMU to the host kernel. So we can use the vhost framework to implement an in-kernel Vertio block device emulation. In this way we bypass QEMU so we will reduce the overhead since we have less layer to cross but we cannot use the QEMU storage features anymore. So this approach is fine only for raw files or block devices. <clears throat> Several implementations have been proposed in previous years, but none have been merged upstream because they didn't show impressive performance. A similar approach, which we presented in a talk at last year's KVM forum, is based on IO Uring the new Linux interface between user space and kernel to do asynchronous I.O. The interface consists of a pair of rings, submission queue and completion queues, allocated by the kernel and shared with the user space. What we tried last year was to map these queues directly into the guest memory, and we modified the bird I.O. block driver to use the host I.O. rings queue directly. We also took advantage of IO Uring's uh, polling features. We enabled SQPoll 
to avoid notification from the guest and IO call to avoid interrupts from the device. The performance of the proof of concept of IO Uring pass-through that we implemented last year was very promising. In the vertical axis, we had KIOPS, higher is better, and we compare FIO running on bare metal, the last column on the right, with IO Uring pass-through and the host block with several optimization. The initial performance of vhost block was very low, but having some polling while processing the word queue and the device in the host kernel increased a lot the performance. With VDPA block software device, which is very similar to vhost as, as we will see, we expect to be between vhost block and IOUring pastor. Iosuring pass-through looks very promising, but requires changes in the guest. Vios block was never merged and requires some work to optimize it. Since VDPA, the new framework to support Vertio device accelerators, was recently introduced, we decided to try to implement an internal software Vertio block device accelerator based on VDPA, because it should allow us to reuse a lot of code even with hardware accelerators. Before we look at the details, let's take a very quick look at VDPA. VDPA is the acronym of BERT-IO Data Path Acceleration. A VDPA device must provide a data path fully compliant with BERT-IO specification. The control path can be vendor-specific, vendor so a small VDPA driver in the host kernel is required for the control part. It was mainly designed for hardware accelerators, but the gray design and abstraction allows also software device emulated in the host kernel. The current implementation locks the guest memory, so the memory hover commit is not supported yet, but compared to vhost, it should be faster since we don't need to handle page faults while accessing word queues. The main advantage of using VDPA is the unified software stack for all VDPA devices. The red boxes in the, in the picture represent the parts of the code that can be reused regardless of the device, software, or by different vendors. VDPA provides a vhost interface for user space or guest vertio driver, like a VM running in Creamy. It also provides a vertio interface, so it behaves like a standard vertio device, and we can directly attach to the host IO subsystem using the standard vertio drivers that we normally use in guests. So in this way, a VDPA device can be used by bare metal or containerized applications running in the host. VDPA also provi provides a management API through Netlink to instantiate or destroy devices and to configure VertIO parameters. So, based on VDPA framework, we can develop a unified software stack to support software and hardware Vertio block devices. Guests don't need any changes since the exported interface is fully compliant with Vertio block specification. The QEMU code and the VDPA framework code in the host kernel can be reused for both software and hardware devices. The custom code that we need is a small VDPA parent driver for each hardware device, such as custom hardware by a vendor or smart NICs and FPGA. This driver will be used only for the control path. For the software device, of course, we need to implement the device emulator in the host kernel. We will base the implementation of VDPA block software device on our experience with IO Uring pass-through and the optimization of vhost block that we have seen. The device will interface directly with the Linux virtual file system 
as Linux AIO and IOU Renglu. This allows both block devices, physical NVMe for example, or a network block device, but also raw files stored on a file system to be used as backend. Eventually, it can be used also as a fallback when hardware accelerators are not available. We will also support dynamic polling strategy that we have been that we have seen have helped a lot to increase the performance of vhost block. So we will have a birth queue polling similar to a Uring SQ poll. The device will poll for a while the birth queue to check if there are new requests. In this way, the guest can potentially submit IO without VM exit. And we will support the IO polling feature of the Linux block layer. This feature must be supported by devices and file system, and it allows to do busy wait for IO completion, avoiding asynchronous interrupts from the device. The VDPA management API will provide a standard way to create and destroy the device and to set up the bird IO parameters defined by the specification, such as the bird queue parameters, for example, queue size, and the bird IO block configuration. We will also need to provide custom API for the VDPA software device to attach it to a block device or a raw file, and also to set up parameters related to the implementation, such as to control the polling mechanism. All the accelerator we have seen so far, starting from vhost block, IOUring pass-through, and the VDPA block software or hardware devices bypass the QEMU block layer. This can be fine when we want to take full advantage of the performance of hardware or software accelerator. As we have seen in these cases, by passing QEMU, the accelerator have direct access to the guest queue for the best possible performance, avoiding several layers, translations, and queuing. But often, we may need QEMU to process requests because we need the storage virtualization features provided by the QEMU block layer, such as image file formats, IO throttling, snapshot, encryption, incremental backup, and other useful features. So, <clears throat> what we would like to do in QEMU is an automatic switching mechanism. We will use the fast path by passing QEMU when we don't need the QEMU storage features and we need the best possible performance using VDPA block hardware accelerator or software device attached to raw files or block devices. As we have seen in this case, the queues are directly exposed to the accelerator. But we may need QEMU to process requests because, for example, we need a QEMU storage feature or to overcome it, the guest run that is not supported for now by VDPA devices, or we need to live migrate a VM. At this point, we will switch from the fast path to the slow path, where QEMU starts to process the guest bird queue. We are already available to do this because we have the bird IO block device emulation in QEMU. What we need to add is the interface with VDPA block device. A very interesting approach was already proposed by Eugenio, primarily to solve the problem of live migrating VMs with VDPA devices. In this case, QEMU allocates a new vert queue, which we call shadow vert queue, and expose it to the VDPA device. This gives QEMU complete control of the guest to perform migration, but it also allows QEMU to intercept requests and process them in the QEMU block layer, applying functionality requested by the user. For some cases, the use of the fast or slow path can be done at start time, but the most interesting case is the runtime switch, when we need, for example, to live migrate a VM or because a storage feature is requested while the VM is running. 
For example, the user want to set a your throttling. About runtime switch, let's try to, to follow an example. Initially, we start using the fast path because we, we don't need the QEMU storage feature. So the BERT queue is processed directly by the VDPA device. At some point, an operation is requested by the user where we need the we need QEMU to process the BERT queue. So we need to switch to the slow path where QEMU takes control of the BERT queue. But before doing this, we should freeze the device state. So we must stop the guest driver from queuing a new request and wait for the VDPA device to complete all in-flight requests. When all requests are completed, QEMU takes control of the vert queue, allocates the new shadow vert queue and expose it to the VDPA device. So at this point we are ready and we can restart the gas driver allowing to queue new requests. After some time, the requested operation ends. For example, we have successfully migrated the VM or the operation is no longer required. So we can switch back to the fast path, doing the opposite of what we did before. We need to stop the gas driver again and wait for in-flight request to complete. <clears throat> Then QEMU passes control of guest vert queue back to the VDPA device. And at this point, we are ready and we can restart the guest driver, taking advantage of the fast path for the best performance. This was an overview of what we would like to do leveraging the VDPA capabilities. Currently, we merged upstream a VDPA block simulator in the Linux kernel. It is a simple RAM disk that can be used to develop and test the software stack. In the coming months, we would like to develop a first implementation of the software in kernel device simulation, especially to see if our performance expectations are correct. Then, we will focus on QEMU, adding the VDPA block support and the auto-switching system between fast and slow path. We expect new hardware based on VDPA block to be released, custom accelerators from vendors, but also based on SmartNICs and FPGA. All these things could go in parallel thanks to the simulator already merged. So if you are interested in collaborating, you are really welcome, both software developers and other vendors. Join us and take advantage of the VDPA block stack. Thank you very much for attending this talk and now it's time for questions.